Hey, my name is Soraya Sobada. I'm the queen of healthy Latin cooking, and this is a new episode. <laughs> so welcome. If you've been watching my videos about my breast augmentation surgery, I've been very, very happy with the size, with having the implants. It's been great, right? I've been praising uh, Dr. Adam Perry and Basho, who was the surgeon for my implants great right you know I've been enjoying the hell out of them I'm sort of spending time with someone as a friend and intimately with someone who just adores my breasts now this is the first time with the men that I've dated that this particular gentleman loves them and goes nuts on my nipples really adores them he caresses them and I can feel the sensation on my nipples so I'm really really happy I do have sensation I'm really happy with the way they look and feeling very much like a woman they really actually motivated me to do my legal name change when I got my breasts I was like yes I am Soraya so that was really cool if you remember I gave my breasts two different names I gave them two different names because organically already when I came to surgery I always had one breast bigger than the other and I was called boy with tits in junior high school you know some of my trauma if you're familiar with my trauma that was junior high school boy with tits boy with tits so I always had breasts I was a breasty boy and then they worked for my advantage when I got older I like to cut around like that and kind of keep it light and airy and fluffy and sweet but it's true and when I went for breast augmentation Dr. Perry was like look you do have one breast bigger than the other so we're gonna have two different size implants this side my right I called her Marissa she was Puerto Rican <laughs> right and this side I called Christina now the reasons why is because there were two different sizes but Marissa this side always stayed really calm I received no feedback from this side of the breast nothing from Marissa saying that I'm uncomfortable, I'm in pain, nothing. Implant went in, no problem. But Christina, who's Italian, by the way, this one's Puerto Rican. I'm just kidding around. Not that Italians are troublemakers. But Christina gave me problems from the very onset. She would give me little pains and little jabs of pain. And I thought it was maybe a wire bra that down here was hurting. This one always was a little cranky from the very onset and as time moved on my primary care doctor with NYU addressing my breasts as a trans woman was problematic my own doctor you know she her reaction to a mammogram was like you don't have breasts I was like ah. oh I was called boy with tits I had tits all these years now that I'm celebrating my tits I, I don't have tits <laughs> You can't always get what you want when you need it. The primary care doctor I had wasn't in touch with my transgender status, my body. She wasn't seeing me as a trans woman. I was able to finally get a mammogram after some resistance. After the mammogram, some three months later, after I noticed my breast was getting really firmer, I then went to see my surgeon, Dr. Adam Perry, who then felt like, yeah, I had a possible rupture. So I have a rupture now. While rare, extra capsular spread of silicone into the breast tissue may cause palatable no nodules in the breast with the possibility of swollen lymph nodes. It's getting encapsulated. There's a layer that's happening on the left breast that's firming it up quite firm actually at this point and the breast is actually rising it's not falling as it was initially and actually from the very start they weren't symmetrical they weren't even this one was always a little higher this one felt really beautiful and low i still i love them they're like children you love them even though they may not look exactly the same <laughs> maybe this one is stronger and the other one is smarter you know you love them both the same the mammogram was not enough dr perry needed to do ultrasound and dr perry needed to do an mri I ended up going from nyu examining me to Northwell examining me so now when I really felt the firmness of my breast now I was with Northwell again and Northwell conducted an ultrasound and an MRI the MRI was horrible the ultrasound wasn't bad mammogram was all that squeezing and pushing and that was funky I talked about it that it was very Flintstone era stone age 
Oh, I feel sorry for women. That's not fair. We gotta get our breath squished and pulled. Oh, that was so weird. So weird. So weird. And the MRI was 45 minutes and it was horrible. Even with the headphones on, it was so loud. And I'm a strong person, right? Many of us are. But I could just imagine an elderly grandma or mom, you know, whomever, a female, laying down like that. I had to put my breasts in like these openings, face down, for 45 minutes with all these loud sounds. And even though I had like a headphone sound isolation, I thought I was going to flip. The point of the video here is to explain a little bit and to further empathize with the cisgender female. I do not know why technology is like not as advanced to make these procedures a lot more comfortable than what they were. They were highly uncomfortable. I thought again, like the mammogram was a tough one. You know, they're pulling and tugging and pushing. I felt like they were putting my breasts in vice. It was such a weird thing, right? And then the mammogram, she did say that my breasts were dense. And I think she was referring to this one, so possibly the rupture was there. Possibly the rupture was from the very beginning, because I do remember reaching out to Dr. Perry, the surgeon, and his assistant to say, you know, I'm getting these pains, and it's consistent. But I didn't feel any firmness or anything like that. It was not highly uncomfortable, just from time to time there would be like a jab of a pain. So, being born male, and going through this process of the mammogram, the ultrasound, and the MRI for the breasts. If there's any males watching this, I, please empathize and show a lot more grace to your female counterparts, your mom, your aunt, your grandma, your girlfriend, whoever is in your life as someone that you care about and love that's cisgender female, or even trans <laughs> who has an implant. If this is what you have to go through maybe from time to time, this is not cool. You know I'm on your team. I'm on your side like an Angela Bofield song. I'm on your side when times are hard and your breast is feeling a little hard. It's maybe a rupture. It's nothing to sing about. And it certainly is uncomfortable when you get that MRI. But I'm on your side when times and your breasts feel tough. I haven't done one of those in a while. I still got it. I, I like to admit what, whatever. Um, I had to applaud myself, um, which I like to do because somebody's got to do it. What's the situation now, Soraya, after all those tests? Well, I want to say that I felt Northwell handled the testing much better. The process and the waiting room, and it wasn't like cattle call like NYU. It was one at a time, the women going in, and it wasn't like five women in a room with robes on waiting to be called. I'm so glad that it went smooth with the other women in the waiting room and the other women were all there. It was like, oh, it kind of felt like cattle, sheep, you know, kind of going through the process. Like, So that was a lot less stressful for me, and I'm sure stressful for any patient. Um, so I would say the Northwell testing for mammogram was superior in process than NYU. I did notice still with paperwork and identity as a trans woman with mammogram and all the breast examinations that it's complicated for the staff. I guess they don't get a lot of trans women coming in for those tests. But anyway, I did notice like the weird, like, uh, uh, where, uh, <laughs> where maybe if I was cisgender, they boom, right through. I, that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. So what's happening now in about two weeks, uh, I will be having the a revision, the implant's gonna come out, a new one's gonna go in. Maybe some cleaning of whatever that got the encapsulation thing that's going on there. Definitely a new breast is going in. I know I'm gonna have a drain on this one side, which I didn't have drains initially, but uh, I'll get through it. I'm not really sharing this with a lot of people because I don't wanna put fear in them about this, especially some of my trans friends, actually one in particular that just got her breast on recently. I didn't tell her about this challenge that could happen to any woman who has implants. But it is happening to me. And I did want to come to the camera just to explain and go through the process of what this was like for me. And that, uh, yeah, um, September 8th, I'm scheduled for surgery. I went back to Northwood for my transgender health 
to not be discouraged if you had implants. Some folks were really finding an advantage to watching my videos regarding the, the breast augmentation. But it, it's good to know that these little challenges may arise. Just to come back a bit, they're, they're still, you know, beautiful. But if I was to take my bra off, you could really notice that this one rises up higher than this one. This one falls more teardrop. So that's it. Thank you so much. Take good care. Wish me luck. Bye.